Allah Azza wa Jal taught our messenger alayhi salatu wassalam فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُسْغَيْطِرْ Remind because all you are is someone who's meant to remind. Your only job is to deliver something that will help people remember. That's it. You are not in charge of them at all. لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُسْغَيْطِرْ You're not in control over them. سَيْطَرَى in Arabic is control. And the messenger is being told, no matter how much you remind them, you know, when you remind somebody or you give somebody advice, you're hoping they'll take your advice. It's, it's logical. It's good for them. You mean it in good intention. Why wouldn't they listen to you? And when you give somebody advice out of concern and love for them and they don't listen to you, it's frustrating. Why aren't they listening? I mean, I told them, I even clarified to them why I'm telling them this. They know it's good for them and they're still not listening to me. And a kind of a frustration and an anger builds inside you. And that frustration, maybe even, it may not be because you're arrogant. Maybe it may not be because you want, you know, people to be under your command. But it may simply be because you want them to change for their own good. And that's what the Prophet wanted, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for his people. And yet, they, many of them wouldn't change. You know, I'm reminded most powerfully of what happens at the passing of Abu Talib. Abu Talib is an uncle of the Prophet ﷺ who's not like Abu Lahab. He's not like Abu Jahal. His other uncles were adamantly against Islam. They insulted him, they attacked him. Abu Lahab was the most vicious of them. He even celebrated when the Prophet's child passed away. Next door neighbor, celebrating that he heard that a baby just died. How sick is that? And that's his uncle, you know? And so he experienced incredible amounts of suffering at the hands of his family. But Abu Talib was a support. Abu Talib protected the Prophet ﷺ. He took charge of him. And he even brought him back securely back into Mecca. So he, you know, there, there's so many things that Abu Talib did for, you could say, not just the Prophet, but actually for Islam. But he didn't accept Islam. Until his dying breath, he wouldn't accept it. He was close, but he just couldn't get himself to do it. He, he just didn't take it. And that hurt the Prophet so much, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that someone who loves him, not just someone who hates him, someone who loves him, someone who cares for him, someone he cares for also, like a father figure. And he just won't listen to the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, think about this for a moment. Nobody can give a better speech, and nobody can make a better argument, and nobody can present something more lovingly than the Prophet himself, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he is the best teacher for all of humanity. So Abu Talib had the best teacher with the best message and the best opportunity to learn this message. There was nothing missing; everything that could be done was being done, and yet he's still not listening. And so this pain that maybe the Prophet sallallahu alaihi you know, what what did he do wrong? What did he, what's missing? Why won't he just accept? And so Allah told the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam something very heavy that I want you to really think about today. And that's the words of Allah when Abu Talib passed away. إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ You cannot, you certainly are not the one who guides whoever you love. You're not in charge of guiding whoever you love. Now, I love my children. You can love your spouse, you can love your parents, you can love your brother or your sister. We, we have love for family. The Prophet ﷺ's love can never be compared. The kind of love he had, the kind of heart, he, we can never compare. And that love makes you want the best things for the person you love. Which is why the Prophet ﷺ wants guidance for Abu Talib. That's the best thing you can have. The ultimate gift would be guidance. And Allah has given the ultimate gift of guidance to the Messenger ﷺ. And his loving uncle didn't take it. He didn't take this profound gift. It's so painful. And Allah taught him a very heavy reality. And through that painful experience of the Prophet ﷺ, he taught us a reality. You for sure are not the one who guides whoever you love. You know, every time we read about the Prophet ﷺ and something painful that he went through, you have to understand something. Allah put him through trials and difficult experiences, not because Allah wants him to go through difficult experiences. Allah loves him more than anyone else. He's, this is the most beloved creation of Allah. So you have to ask yourself, why is Allah putting His Messenger through these painful experiences? Because He is rahmatan. للعالمين, because he's a mercy and a teacher and a care and an act of love from Allah for all people forever to come. In other words, you and I are going to have people that we love. You and I are going to have people in our life that we want to see guided, 
that we want to see change and we're not going to see them change no matter what we do. And it's going to be frustrating. What are we supposed to do? I've tried everything. I've tried speaking softly. I've tried gently reminding. I've tried this and I've tried that and I've tried the other. Nothing's working. I don't know what to do. They, they seem to be getting even further away. And it is in these moments that we have to remind ourselves of the exact same pain that the Prophet ﷺ felt at people like his uncle. And by the way, it's not even limited to his uncle. In, in the Arabic language, in نَكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتَ This is called al-a'id, al-dhamir al-a'id in grammar. So the expected language is in نَكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتَ هُ There's a dhamir expected. But the, there's a حذف الضمير. There's a pronoun missing. And what that does is that the, the ayah is not even limited to the uncle of the Prophet wasallam. The ayah is actually open to his love for all people and all, you know, the entire Quraysh, all of humanity. The Prophet wasallam's burden was not just his family. The Prophet wasallam's burden out of love for humanity was actually all of humanity. Whoever would not listen. Whoever would not listen. Can you imagine the analogy he gave sallallahu alayhi wasallam about his love for finding, give, giving people guidance. He would compare himself to someone standing in front of a fire and these ins- insects and these moths, you know, they get attracted to the light and they, f- they fly right into the fire. And he's trying to shoo them away, you know. Like literally like you get those zappers, bug zappers and stuff in homes that attract the bugs because of the light, you know. That, and he's trying to get them away from there. You're going to kill yourself. You're attracted to something that's going to destroy you. And he's trying to push them away. That's the incredible love of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And yet Allah told him, actually, your only job is to remind people. Your only job is to deliver a message in a loving, caring way. But what they do from there on, بَلِ الْإِنسَانَ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ بصيرة. A person has to be in full view of their own self. Everybody's responsible for themselves. You know, when I travel and I, you know, sometimes people see me at a restaurant and recognize me and then after wanting a selfie, they want to have a conversation or whatever. And we sit down and have a chat. And when we have a chat, a lot of times it's about their family. Here, this is my daughter. And, you know, she used to pray. She used to pray every single day. And... Um, until she was 12, 13 years old, I made sure she prayed all her prayers. And then by the time she got 18, she went to college. And now I don't know if she prays anymore. What can you tell her? Tell her something that can translate. So, and she, you know, and the, the daughter's sitting next to her, rolling her eyes like, oh God, here we go again. You know, <laughs> she's being put on the spot. So first of all, I apologize to the daughter. Sorry. And she even tells me, the mom even tells me, I send her all your videos. And so I, I'm sorry that she sends you my videos. First of all, let's, let me apologize about that. But after that, the thing is that we have to understand something. Allah who controls, we believe Allah controls every leaf on every tree. We control, Allah controls every movement of every honeybee. Allah who controls every step that every ant takes. And I ask, do you believe in this control that Allah has? Yeah, I do. Then why do you think you can control your child? Who's in charge? Who's going to control the outcome for our kids? What they're going to do and what they're not going to do. Once they become adults, then their choices are theirs to make. We have to understand our only job can be to remind, but even that so gently, you know, and some, some parents or some, it's not just about parents. It could be siblings or spouses, whoever else. We start thinking, no, 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 that's all I do is just remind. But yeah, nagging is not the same as reminding. Sarcasm is not the same as reminding. Criticizing someone or making someone feel like scum is not the same as reminding. Embarrassing someone is not the same as reminding. Oh, you didn't pray, did you? No, no, but I remind, I remind very gently. How do you remind? You know, you're just going to burn in hell if you keep, keep, keep this up. Uh, this is not the way you remind someone. This is not the way you, uh, if you, you know, you're hoping they dress the way you'd like them to. That they behave the way you'd like them to. They pray the way, and then ask a hard question to people who want to do that. I, would, I just wish my son would pray. And your son comes over to the house to visit. He works in some different city. He comes to visit you. And when he visits you, you say, pray, pray, pray. And then he prays, fine. And when he prays, why did he pray? I mean, if he was going to verbalize his intentions, they're not going to be, I'm about to pray the Dhuhr Salah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's going to say, I'm going to pray four rak'ah because my mother won't leave me alone. Allahu Akbar. Those intentions are not for Allah anymore. That's, he didn't do that for Allah. So what good is it? Actions are only good if their intentions are right. Doesn't everybody know that? So if we're trying to control what somebody else does, and now they're doing it because we wanted them to do it, and we forced them to do it, or we pressured them to do it, or we nagged them into doing it, then they're doing it for the wrong reasons, which makes it completely worthless. 
It's utterly worthless. And so here, what the messenger is being taught is a profound, heavy truth. We are not in control. We're not in charge. We, we cannot control any other human being and what they do. No one, no matter how much we love them, no matter how much we think we're responsible for them. And that's the next thing. Parents feel like they're responsible. A spouse might feel like they're responsible. An older brother or a sister might feel like they're responsible. But I'm responsible. My, my, brother, my younger brother is drifting away. He's doing bad stuff. I, I need to stop him. I'm responsible for him. A father might feel responsible. A mother might feel responsible. The thing is, nobody's ever going to feel more responsible than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Nobody. Nobody will ever have more of a sense of responsibility. And he did feel the burden, the pain of people not listening, of people drifting away. He did feel that pain. And yet Allah told him there's a reality that even if it's in your mind, your heart forgets it. And your heart needs to remember that you cannot guide whoever you love. And when you see the one you love going in harm's way, if you saw your child you know, going towards a swimming pool and they don't know how to swim, if you saw somebody heading towards a car crash, if you saw, if you saw that, you'd want to stop them. That's what naturally we want. That's a protective you know, sense, sense that Allah put inside all human beings. We want to protect those that we love. But we have to do it after understanding that when it comes to guidance, when it comes to changing somebody's behavior, that we have to follow the model given to our Messenger wasallam, And he's being told, your only job is to remind. You are not in control. لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُسَيْطِرٍ You are not in control over them at all.